Hey, 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 hey! Hush, is that you? What, what are you doing, man? Oh, Jonas, I'm so happy it's you. I'm stuck, and uh, I need you to help me record the next VFX side quest. What? But I never... No, but, 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 you, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, I, I'll do it. But when is Run! That? It's starting in a few seconds. What? There he goes. Hey, Action Movie Pilt here, and you are looking great today. I was watching the trailer of Free Guy and there is this fantastic disintegration effect that I wanted to recreate using Cinema 4D and After Effects. Now this is the footage I was using as a starting point. Here is my result after just 3 hours of work and one night of rendering and now I'm gonna show you what I did to get there. I started with this footage of a woman walking through an empty car park area from Artgrid. I downloaded the 4K version, cropped it to 1080p in After Effects and exported it as an image sequence since Cinema 4D's motion tracker does like image sequences better than videos. In Cinema 4D I switched to the motion tracker layout, created a motion tracker object and imported the footage. I resampled it to 50%, let the automatic 2D tracking pass do its magic and then I set the focal length parameter to known and constant, assumed 80mm to be the correct focal length and hit the Run 3D Solver button. And it worked perfectly. Then I aligned the result in 3D space by creating a position constraint to define the scene origin, a planar constraint to define the ground or street plane, and a vector constraint to define the z-axis as well as the scale of the scene. Now the tracking step was already finished, but I always prefer checking the result. So I created a plane with a bend deformer to roughly match the bending in the car park lines and applied a material with a checkerboard shader in the alpha channel. This is a perfect way to see if a track is stable in all the relevant areas, which is the case here. After tracking, I had to prepare the existing plane for the disintegration effect, and I did that in the standard layout. First I baked the bend into the geometry by performing a connect objects and delete. Then I created a Voronoi fracture object as a parent, increased the count of fragments by adjusting the point amount in the point generator source and enabled the detailing settings to get more geometry. And I also ticked noise surface to break up the typical straight lines coming from the Voronoi fracture algorithm. After that, I turned this into one polygon object by running the connect objects and delete command again, got rid of all tags I didn't need anymore and renamed the object to street. Now that the geometry was prepared, I took care of the UVs in the UV edit layout. The existing UV set is perfect for rendering the grid lines on the street, but I needed another UV set which allowed me to project a frame of the video plate onto the street. So I clicked the gear icon of the set UVW from projection command and set its name and projection type to frontal. And although it's looking ok, I wanted to avoid any problems coming from the different aspect ratios since the UV space is square and the render aspect ratio is 16 by 9. So I created a quad helper polygon using the polygon pen which is taking all of the UV space by default fortunately. Then in the transform section I typed 16 divided by 9 into the scale Y field and applied, which stretched the UVs to the correct ratio. For moving the stretched UV polygon down I also used 16 divided by 9 in the move Y field but subtracted 1 for the UV space, divided this by 2 to get rid of one of the overlaps, hit apply and got rid of the helper polygon. Perfect. Now I wanted to create a simple material for the street to project the first frame of the footage onto the fractured plane. I used Photoshop to create a clean plate of the street by combining the first frame with frame 42 using the transform tool and a mask. Back in Cinema 4D I created a redshift material, added the clean plate to the shader graph and connected it to the diffuse color. I dragged the UV tag of the frontal projection I created earlier into the UV channel field and applied the material to the street object. Now here is one gotcha. Although the projection doesn't look correct in the viewport, it is correct as soon as it is rendered using the viewport IPR. So always check your texture projections while rendering if you're using Redshift. Great, now finally I could create the actual disintegration effect. The whole effect is based on a field setup. Fields are basically just weights or masks in 3D space, but they can be used everywhere in Cinema 4D, which makes them really powerful. So basically, I created the effect mask first, and then the effect itself. My favorite way of visualizing the mask is by creating a vertex map on an object and tick Use Fields. I deleted the freeze layer in there and created a group field because it makes it easier to reuse the setup later. And then I worked in there to create the other fields, starting with a linear field to create a simple gradient and adjusted the length and direction. 
Then I added a random field, adjusted the noise type to VL noise, increased the scale a lot and set the blending mode to overlay which is breaking up the linear gradient here to make it more organic. Next I added a curve modifier layer which is pretty much the same as an adjustment layer in After Effects to sharpen the edges of the organic gradient just a bit. And finally I added another random field, increased its noise scale and set its blending mode to overlay as well to roughen the edges of the gradient even more. Now it was time to animate the linear field to make the mask move along the street. So I set two keyframes on position Z and brought up the timeline to make the keyframe interpolation linear. And this is what it looked like. Remember, we are just visualizing the weights on the plane, but they actually exist everywhere in 3D space. So this would also work on all other objects, like walls or trees for example. Okay, now I was able to use that mask to create the actual effect. But first I had to create a fracture object and set the mode to explode segments to allow the street fragments to be affected by effectors. Then I started with a plane effector and set it up to scale the fragments down uniformly. In the fall of tab I added the group field containing the mask setup and added a curve modifier layer to remap the mask to my liking. This was the fall of setup I used in all the effectors because it allowed me to stay flexible since everything was based on the very same mask and I was able to adjust the curve modifier layer for each effector separately. Next I created a second plane effector which I used to move the fragments down. For this plane effector I adjusted the curve modifier so that the fragments were accelerating as they were falling down. Then I created a random effector to add some variation to the fragments rotations and added the mask setup to the fall of tab again. Next I wanted to deform the edge of the effect so that it looks like there was a little wave before breaking. I used the plane effector to do that, made it a child of the street, set the deformation mode to points and adjusted the curve modifier so that it was masked a little earlier than the other effectors. And finally I used a random effector as a deformer as well to crumple the fragments. And this is already the whole setup for the top street layer. Isn't that cool? It felt really cool! Now I adjusted the street material so that a grid would appear right before the wave. To do that, I created a grid setup consisting of a few ramp nodes and a color layer node, multiplied a max on noise node on top of it and used the vertex map I used to visualize the mask setup in a C4D vertex map node with a ramp to mask the effect. Finally, I colorized the grid with another ramp so that there was some blue in it, plugged it into the emission color and increased the emission weight to 1, which looked like this. But although it already looked cool, I wanted to add some debris. So I created a flat cube and Voronoi fractured it again with a high point amount in the point generator source. Then I created a copy of the effectors affecting the street, assigned them to the Voronoi fracture object and adjusted the curve modifiers in their falloffs. When I was satisfied I exported the setup as an alembic and made sure I only exported selected elements and had merge generated ticked, because this has a huge impact on performance when you re-import the alembic file. Back in the original project I created a copy of the street material, used the combination of a Fresnel and a triplanar node to add bluish light emission to the sides of the fragments and assigned it to the imported alembic. And to get even more debris, I created a copy of the alembic and used its offset parameter to offset them in time. This is a quite useful workflow if you have no time but need more detail in a setup like this one. But I wanted to add a bit more depth to the shot. So I downloaded this set of European buildings by Cliché Studio from TurboSquid.com, adjusted them, converted the textures to Redshift and placed them in the scene. Then I modeled and textured the roof of the foreground building, but in this case only those parts which are visible in the final shot and placed it in my scene as well. I even modeled antennas, but if you want to be more clever than me, just use the free antennas from the Cinema 4D asset browser. After I finished the buildings I lit the scene. Simply by adding a redshift sky and a redshift infinite light as the sun and rotated it so that the shadow direction was matching the video plate. I also adjusted the shadows casted by some of the background buildings so that they aren't too long. I did that by creating redshift object tags on the buildings and by unticking the cast shadows option. Then I created instances of the same objects, added redshift object tags on them again and unticked primary and secondary ray visible. This way I was able to adjust the length of the shadows by moving the instances but not the visible buildings. And yes, I know this is cheating, but it helped me later in compositing because I didn't have to take care of shadows casted onto the walking woman. Once I was happy with the lighting, yeah. Yeah. I prepared the scene for rendering by adding some useful AOVs for compositing using the Redshift AOV manager. I ended up with a beauty pass, shadows, two puzzle mats for the street and the buildings and three custom passes for wireframe, a global noise and a transition mat. 
You can create these custom passes by connecting a shader node, like wireframe, directly to the surface input of the output node and applying the material as default material in the custom AOV. I also activated straight alpha for all passes in the render settings before I hit the render button. After rendering everything I needed as image sequences, I imported the files into After Effects. As you can see, I decided to go with two separate render passes for everything except the foreground building and the foreground building, both with all necessary AOVs. The compositing itself was very straightforward. I started with the cropped original footage from the beginning and multiplied a dark bluish solid masked with the shadow AOV on top. Here I used a color profile converter and linearized the output profile to get smoother shadow edges. Then I created a copy of the beauty pass render and set the alpha to be ignored in the interpret footage settings. So I had one beauty pass with alpha channel and another one without. I added the beauty without alpha, the custom transition mat and the street puzzle mat to the comp. Since puzzle mats can store one object buffer for each color channel, I used the set channels effect to create a luma mat from the green channel, brightened up the grays with curves and set the layer blend mode to add. I pre-composed it with the custom transition mat and masked the beauty channel with it. Then I created a copy of the beauty layer and masked it using three copies of the buildings puzzle mat with set channels again to create a luma mat for each color channel and added them on top of each other in a new pre-comp. I finished the original comp by adding the beauty render that contained the alpha on top of everything, setting the blend mode to stencil alpha and pre-composing it. Then I added the foreground building and the sky. The sky needed to be a 3D layer to match the camera movement. So I imported the separated roof C4D file into After Effects and added it to the comp. In the Cineware effect, I clicked the Extract button to extract the solved camera from Cinema 4D to the comp, added a slightly modified sky image I once shot as a 3D layer and placed it to my liking. I also noticed that the woman's head was still intersecting with the cheated shadows of the buildings. So I used Rotobrush to create a quick mask for her, smoothed it a bit and added the layer on top. And look at her already. She's definitely one of the guys not looking at explosions, Armageddon or the world disintegrating. Next I wanted to add the wireframe flickering on some of the buildings. I started with the foreground building by adding the wireframe and global noise passes I created using custom AOVs in Redshift. I increased the contrast on the global noise layer with a curves effect, used it as a luma mat for the wireframe and pre-composed the two layers. In the parent comp, I added curves to the layer to tint the wireframe to something bluish and added optical glow to improve the wireframe's look. Then I repeated the same steps on some of the background buildings and added some keyframes to create the flickering. When I was happy with the flickering, I selected the foreground buildings, the street with the background buildings and the sky and added super comp. In Supercomp, I created some light wraps and another optical glow for the street, but restricted it to very bright areas using the highlights only parameter. And finally, I created an adjustment layer on top of everything and applied magic bullet looks to add a lens vignette and edge softness. And here is my final free guy disintegration effect again. Cool, I hope you liked it. Now play with the effect, ask your questions in the comments below and share.